you know, some people say this movie was so bad that it was a real bomb. Good job, Adam. You made easily the worst joke in the history of this channel. You know, next to anything MC Swig has ever done. So for anyone that's been following this channel since the beginning, uh, you might remember back in 2015, back when we were still doing like movie parody skits for the blockbusters, um, we said we did a, a Super Mario Brothers movie parody, but it was really just like an April Fool's gag, it was like a cheap little YouTube poop. Well, all these years later, we're finally doing a full review of the Super Mario Brothers movie, as well as The Wizard. We're, we're gonna just briefly talk about The Wizard. The, the main crux of this review is gonna be the, the Mario movie. So to put things into perspective, the Super Mario Brothers movie was basically the first ever video game movie. Like, there were movies about video games before that, like Tron and War Games and, of course, The Wizard, but that was the first one ever based on a video game. To briefly cover The Wizard, it's about a kid who is put in an institution because he's really depressed about his sister who died, and so his uh, older brother, played by Fred Savage from The Wonder Years, breaks him out, and they decide that they're gonna go to California, because that's how the kid always says it. California. Along the way, they come across this girl who's also a runaway, and they find out that uh, Jimmy, the, the little kid, is really good at Nintendo, so they decide that they're gonna go to this big uh, video game competition. Of course, along the way, they're being pursued by this slime ball that picks up missing kids for money, and they're also being followed by uh, their dad and another older brother, and re really, like, when you're a kid in the late 80s, you're obviously there to see the video game shit, and like the, the, the plot was basically secondary. That's another thing. One of the other villains we have here is uh, the Game Master, Lucas, who, the, the, talk about the ultimate product placement. He, he's such a badass, he can actually play NES games while successfully using the Power Glove. From what I gather, the Power Glove was basically just the predecessor to the Wiimote, and it was just as ineffective as the Wiimote was. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Big takeaway that I had with The Wizard was, um, apparently they actually wanted it to be more of a legitimate movie. Like, they actually had more script for it. Like, there's, like, half an hour worth of deleted scenes, and a lot of it was very story-heavy, but, uh, Universal said no. They told the director that they weren't going to add it because they thought, oh, he was a nobody in the industry. Props to that director, though, he actually got away with making his own ending versus the ending that the studio wanted, because, okay, to, to wrap up the movie, what happens in The Wizard at the end is they end up getting there, uh, there's a quick runaround scene through the Universal Studios theme park backlot. Uh, like, they even show off a lot of the rides, even the King Kong ride that's no longer there. Um, that whole scene, in fact, you know what, this entire movie kind of feels like like a, like a their own spin on Pee-wee's Big Adventure, even down to the dinosaurs. Like, remember the dinosaur statues in Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Those show up at the end because that's where the kid ends up putting the pictures of his sister. Because Apparently Universal originally wanted to have the movie end with them throwing the pictures in a river, and then you would watch the, the pictures flow downstream. That's, that's just despicable. At least have the movie end on more of a happy note. I mean, if you're gonna make a movie that's, you're gonna cut this movie that had a lot of story going into it into just basically a giant Nintendo commercial, you might as well end on a happy note instead of ending it on that. So, fuck you, Universal. Yeah, the movie basically ends at this big video game competition where they unveiled Mario 3, which to American audiences was new at the time. Nobody knew that there was a Mario 3, and this movie was basically the big advertisement for that. So yeah, to sum up thoughts on The Wizard, it's very cheesy. It's a, it's a very, like, late 80s movie that's just made to show off how cool Nintendo was. But, I mean, it, for people who probably grew up with it, it's probably nostalgic, so, I mean... If you enjoy it, that's totally fine. Me personally, like, I didn't, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but I'm just like, eh, this is just really cheesy and meh. I'm glad that somebody pointed me to those deleted scenes, though, because it actually does show that this movie wasn't originally going to be just a giant Nintendo ad, and that it was actually going to be a story at first, and then eventually Universal, doing what most movie companies do, steamrolled the thing and went, yeah, no, 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 cut all that out and put more Nintendo shit in, because they're paying good money for it. But yeah, enough of that, onto the Mario Brothers movie. So you're probably wondering, how do you make a movie about the original Mario Brothers games, because there really isn't a whole lot of story. I mean, yeah, sure, it's about a princess that gets kidnapped and two plumbers have to go on this big adventure across a kingdom to go save her, but, um, well, pff, 
that people didn't really know what a blueprint for a good video game adaptation movie was because there wasn't really one based on one at the time. It's not like comic book movies, which have been going since like, you know, serials back in like, the you know, the black and white era. So there, there really wasn't a blueprint for like what makes a good comic book movie versus video game movie because at the time video games were still a relatively new medium. I remember when I first learned about this movie existing because this came out long before I was born. So. When I found out about it, I was like, wait, there's a Mario movie and it sucks? Like, whoa, wh wh when did this happen? And then to find out it was released in 1993. And well, okay, so what they did with the plot is you have Mario and Luigi, who are Brooklyn Italian plumbers, played by Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, one of which is British and one of which is Hispanic, and they decided to have them play Italians. Luigi falls in love with this girl, Daisy, who turns out to be a princess of the Mushroom Kingdom, essentially. So yeah, I guess it's supposed to be like Daisy from the games, which at the time, I think the only Mario game that had Daisy was one of the Game Boy games. So it feels kind of weird that they didn't, I mean, I guess they couldn't really make Princess Toadstool sound good. But yeah, she's digging for dinosaur bones and it turns out that, oh, you know, she's actually royalty in this alternate universe and she's being hunted by these, these two bumbling henchmen who turn out to be named Iggy and Spike, which are also characters from the games. Uh, I don't remember Spike, but I remember Iggy was one of the Koopa kids. They end up taking Daisy back to their dimension, and Mario and Luigi end up going in after her, and they end up in uh, Dino Hatton, which is this kind of cyberpunky type apocalyptic world where um, everyone evolved from reptiles, specifically dinosaurs, instead of how humans evolved from primates. Because there is an animation added at the beginning with voiceover from the guy who does Homer Simpson's voice where they explain that when the meteor hit Earth, it actually split our world into two different dimensions and yeah, the one that we live in is the one where we evolved from, from mammals versus the other one where they evolved from reptiles. And this entire world is led by Bowser, oh no wait, I'm sorry, King Koopa, even though even in the original game he was called Bowser, King of the Koopas. Uh, they call him King Koopa, and he's played by uh, Dennis Hopper, who plays the role as kind of, he looks like, what's that thing's name, Max Headroom, and he's played like kind of a slimy businessman type, he's like kind of like Biff from Back to the Future 2, like so as soon as Mario and Luigi are noticed by the people of this civilization, and they make it clear that they're trying to rescue Daisy, they basically become public enemy number one, and so there's a bunch of them running around, there's a, a scene where they hijack one of the cop cars and they end up uh, speeding through, there's a car chase. They establish a bunch of different things about this universe, like they have these machines that can either evolve or de-evolve creatures. Like they take this one guy who the Mario Brothers end up in prison with temporarily, who is this guy who plays music on the street corner, and his name is Toad? Like the character from the game, but he, here he's just like a guy on a street corner who plays guitar and harmonica and he has a mohawk. And then he ends up being uh, de-evolved into a Goomba, which instead of looking like they do in the games, you know, these like kind of like fungi looking things with big heads and really small bodies, here it's the opposite where they have these really small reptile heads with goofy faces and massive bodies. In Koopa's palace there also is a little dinosaur named Yoshi because this movie came out around the time the SNES was a thing. So uh, they tried to plug in as much stuff from the games including stuff from Super Mario World. Uh, so much so that eventually they get these de-evolution guns that they're going to use on humanity and turn us all into monkeys. And they're seriously the SNES Super Scopes just painted a different color. So throughout the movie, they end up befriending Iggy and Spike, who help them try to overthrow Koopa and rescue Daisy. The reason that Koopa and his gang are after Daisy is because she has this amulet that has a little part of the meteorite that can open the two worlds together at the same time. And um, th that amulet got stolen by this woman who works at this, like, this bar dance club thing. And her name is Big Bertha, kind of like the giant fish creature from Mario 3. Yeah, this movie's really weird with references to the games like that. I mean, I appreciate them for trying to connect it to the games, but it's, it just feels kind of weird when it's stuff like that. It's like, yeah, when you think Big Bertha, you think of the giant fish creature, not just some big woman who works at a club. 
But anyways, she ends up helping them escape when, like, Koopa's boys show up to try and catch them. Uh, they end up working their way into Koopa's palace. Then once they get inside the place, that's when they don the famous Mario Brothers, you know, hats and overalls, the red and green outfits that they always wear. Apparently the directors were really against that until the producers demanded that they put that in. To this point, we find out what happened to Daisy's father, who was the original king, and he was de-evolved into fungi. So they even say at one point, you know, you and your little mushroom kingdom. I'm like, okay, so I guess that was their way of trying to fit in the whole mushroom kingdom into the movie's lore, I guess. Point is, the bad guys get the part of the meteorite from the amulet. They end up merging the two worlds, but only temporarily. I mean, they end up in New York and they turn one person into a monkey with their de-evolution guns. And then after that, they just kind of end up back where they were. Yeah. Mario and Luigi end up getting their hands on the de-evolution guns and they de-evolve Koopa from, you know, this humanoid creature to a giant T-Rex looking thing. Oh, kind of like in the in the games. And then they just kind of de-evolve him into ooze. And then th he's defeated. And then the people rejoice. Oh yeah, and the king of the Mushroom Kingdom has turned back and he's played by Lance Hendrickson for a couple of seconds. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. He just shows up for like one scene. Not even. He just shows up for a couple seconds and then that's it. Th that was a real great use of Lance Hendrickson there. Then, of all things, the movie ends on a cliffhanger because then they leave Daisy back in her world because she says that she has to stay there for a while. And then, after, you know, some time has gone by, she then shows up at their apartment again and is like, Guys, you won't believe what's going on. You guys gotta get ready. And they, they grab some, some tools, they're ready to fight, and then that's the end of the movie. Luigi, Mario! Daisy! You gotta come with me, I need your help. What, what, what's wrong? You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You do? <laughs> I believe. Oh yeah, and there's also a pre-Marvel post-credit thing where uh, there's some Japanese video game developers talking to somebody and you think they're talking to the Mario Brothers but then it turns out they're talking to Iggy and Spike and they're like, yeah, we'll call it Super Koopa Cousins. Well, I must say we have a very exciting proposal. A video game based on your many adventures. The Super Koopa Cousins. I will admit it, it did kind of get a laugh out of me. So overall, what did I think of the Mario Brothers movie? Well, I wouldn't really say it's a great movie, obviously. It's it's not very good. Is it a, another bad video game movie? Leaning more towards yes. Um, is it a bad Mario movie? Well, I mean, I personally think it's up for debate. I mean, there's tons of stuff from the games. It feels like they did try to connect it to the games as much as possible. I wouldn't really say that they did it 100% correctly, but I at least appreciate the effort versus other video game movies, which just feel like they're not even remotely trying. I know some people who didn't like the tone of this movie. They said, oh, Mario Brothers shouldn't be all gritty and realistic. It's a brightly colored game about running around in a wacky fantasy world and all that kind of thing. But honestly, the tone didn't really bug me because I remember reading in several interviews and behind the scenes stuff, they said that, oh, they were trying to make a Mario equivalent to like, uh, you know, the Tim Burton Batman or the first live action Ninja Turtles movie. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, again, I wouldn't really say that it's as good as those movies, but now knowing that, I at least see what they were trying to do. In my opinion, the biggest problem with this movie is that it suffers from nobody knew what the hell they were doing behind the scenes. From all the horror stories that I heard, from the constant scripts, constant rewrites, incompetent directors, and cast and crew that were just so frustrated at everything, it's the kind of movie where people either didn't want to make it or they had no idea what kind of movie they were making, or it's the kind of movie where everyone had their own little vision of what kind of movie they were making and nobody really seemed like they were on the same page. You know, sometimes that kind of thing can make a great movie. I mean, there was lots of that kind of thing behind the original Ghostbusters. People had a bunch of different versions of what they wanted to make and the original Ghostbusters is still one of the greatest comedies of all time. With this movie, that kind of drama did not help the movie go forward. It just constantly kept pushing the movie back. I mean, oh my god, all the different scripts that they had. One was written by the guy that did Rain Man, who wrote it as like a road trip movie where Mario and Luigi appreciate each other more which in other words is basically just the plot of Rain Man. There was one that was a little bit more fantasy based. It still had the elements of them going to the alternate universe, but it was a little bit more fantasy, more than science fiction, like the final movie. 
they had so many different people in mind for who was going to play who in this movie. Like, Dustin Hoffman was at one point going to be Mario. Tom Hanks was interested in playing Mario. They tried getting Danny DeVito to play Mario as well as direct. They wanted to get Harold Ramis to be the director because he was a big Mario fan. Tried getting Arnold Schwarzenegger or Michael Keaton to play Bowser in this. For a bunch of different directors that they tried out, uh, most of them only had like one or two other movies to their name. Uh, they ended up going with these this husband and wife team that, from what I remember, I think they were the ones that cr like helped create Max Headroom which I guess explains why Bowser looks like the way he does in this movie. From what I've heard about like the horror stories that went on behind this movie, it really does make a lot of sense when you consider like all this stuff that went on behind the scenes and why the movie turned out the way it did. I mean, these people, they were really negligent and there were a bunch of like onset disasters and hazards that could have like seriously injured a bunch of people. In a lot of cases, people did get injured. Apparently they were always condescending and insulting people on the staff and the crew. Uh, they always pissed off the actors. Hourly rewrites were constantly going on and they'd have to reshoot a bunch of shit that they already filmed. Like, hourly rewrites. In the same day, they would film something, the script would get some minor rewrites, and it was just constantly, just this process was clearly not making the movie go forward. It was constantly taking steps backwards. At first, the producers were scared to try and fire these people because they said, oh, well, they're the directors, we don't want to push things back any further. Just let them direct and, you know, we'll see what we can do. Eventually, it got so bad that they eventually just had to fire the directors and had to finish the movie all on their own. That definitely explains why the end of the movie felt so rushed. Like, the whole thing of them temporarily in New York for less than five minutes and then they just go back and finish off Bowser back in his dimension. Apparently they had this whole idea where Bowser would grow giant and Mario would fight him while on top of the Brooklyn Bridge, but obviously like it was just way too ambitious and things were not going smoothly, so they just had to like try and figure out another way to get another ending out. When the movie was finally complete, it did not do well with critics and audiences, and it also bombed at the box office, and it was smoked immediately by Cliffhanger, and then eventually the other big dinosaur movie one of many big dinosaur movies at the time, but the Mac Daddy of dinosaur movies of the 90s, Jurassic Park came along, and this movie, I think, was stopped shown in theaters after like its fourth weekend, I think. So yes, that explains why the movie is so bad. But honestly, as a movie itself, I actually don't mind it. I went into this movie expecting to totally hate it, but honestly, there was stuff in it that I liked. Again, I appreciate them for trying to connect it to the games. They didn't do it 100% correctly, but I appreciate the effort. Um, the, the style, like all the different sets and designs and stuff, that was pretty cool. The special effects, for the most part, actually aren't that bad. As much as the actors hated being in this, I actually liked the performances. I mean, Dennis Hopper is probably the best thing in it. He has the two best lines of the movie. <laughs> Monkey! Unlike Wazamo is an okay Luigi, and Bob Hoskins actually does a pretty damn good, you know, American, New York, Italian accent. He does a really good job. It could have been a lot better, and again, my biggest issue is obviously the production is what held the movie back. But, you know, maybe if the production ran a little smoother, maybe this movie could have been a lot better. In my opinion, I've reviewed so many worse movies than this. I mean, you want to see bad video game movies? Uwe Boll films are so much worse than this will ever be. But don't worry guys, we're actually gonna get a better Mario Brothers movie coming soon from the people that made the Minions movies. Because they make nothing but quality over there. I'd like the Koopa special. Pterodactyl tail on that? Yes. Dino, lizard, hold the mammal, no worms, and uh, spicy. <laughs>